This is the first part of what will become a four-part tutorial series. I see a lot of demos on Adobe's website of individuals making flash files a number of different ways. Uh, some are showing off the new features of InDesign which allow you to make animated and interactive documents. Uh, others will do it the traditional way with the Flash professional development tool. And there's a new product out there called Flash Catalyst and I think for a lot of people it can be a little confusing about how each of them work, which one's the best one to use, and just what are the techniques to uh, create interactive content, and how, how, basically how to leverage your existing skills. Because truthfully, you can create some of the same content with all three of these products. So the way this tutorial series is going to work is this first part, we're going to talk about workflow. We're going to import our design into the three different products. And then from there, part two, Part three and part four will focus on the individual products. So we'll see a, the, the same application built with Flash, Flash Catalyst, and InDesign. Now the point of this tutorial is not necessarily to persuade you to use one product over the other. It's simply to show a process uh, building a somewhat uh, basic application, but, but a somewhat popular application. We're just going to make a little uh, sort of a gallery type application. This is going to be about a, a, a restaurant website and choosing between four restaurants. And you're currently looking at a Photoshop file. Now I have the design set up in the Photoshop file. You'll see the three panels on screen. Now each of these panels actually has a rollover state as well. So when you roll over it, there's a place where the description text will go. And the idea is clicking on that panel, for example, the fourth panel, will reveal the fourth panel's content. And it's just another layer folder with some content in it that overlays. Uh, when clicking the X in the upper right hand corner, you'll be returned back to the menu and you can view the content for any other restaurant. Now, as I said, this is not a very complicated file, and the point is not to persuade you to build this with one tool over the other. I just want to show the workflow and the process so you can then decide which tool you want to use uh, and, and hopefully leverage some existing skills. So we're going to begin with my favorite tool, which is Flash. So I'm going to minimize the Photoshop file, and I'm going to pull open Flash. Now for a number of versions, Flash has had some nice tight integration with Photoshop. So the techniques that I'm going to use to work with Flash are going to work all the way back to Creative Suite 3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Flash document. I'm going to choose it to be an ActionScript 3 document because we're only focusing on ActionScript 3 nowadays. And I'm going to click OK. Once I have this document set, I'm going to import my design right away. I'm not even worrying about saving. I'm not even worrying about the file size or the dimensions of the stage because Photoshop's going to actually take care of that for that for me. I'm going to choose File, Import, Import to Stage. When the dialog pops up, I'm going to find the folder where I have the Photoshop file, and I'm going to choose it, and I'm going to click Open. This now reveals a very large dialog box. The benefit of this dialog box is it's actually introspecting all our layers. Um, and I can choose the exact layers that I want to bring in. Now, notice any invisible layers are currently being omitted. So I for sure want to take all of my content. I want that imported as well. And if I notice in each of the panels, the overstate is currently hidden. I want to make sure I take that as well. So I'm going to go into each of my panels and I'm going to check the overstate to make sure all of my layers are brought in. And again, this is just something you have to be aware of with importing content from Photoshop. One other gotcha that you need to be concerned about is text. By default with Flash, any text that you're bringing in is going to come in as an image. And you can see next to this text layer there's a little image icon. I'm going to select the layer and I'm going to choose it to this to be editable text. Okay, I want to actually be able to edit this text in Flash. So I would need to do that to all my text fields. Now this is kind of a pain if you have a lot of text fields. So what I want you to know is in the preferences for Flash, if you go under your preferences, which if you're on Windows is under the uh, edit menu. On a Mac, it's your uh, your uh, the app, the flash menu in the upper left hand corner. 
you can set for the text to be imported automatically as text by default. So you don't have to go through all the layers like I'm currently doing right now. And you can see what a pain this process can be. Now once I have all my layers set and I'm ready to go, there's one more checkbox you need to be aware of and that's at the bottom. I wanna have this resize my canvas. You'll notice it's gonna place the layers at their original position and I'm gonna get a layer in flash for every layer in Photoshop. I'm gonna hit OK and my design has been imported. If I zoom out, you'll see the content on the stage. I'm going to expand my timeline a little bit here and you'll see that all the layers have now been imported. It's a little bit of a mess right now. We're going to clean that up once we get to the, the part of this tutorial that focuses on flash. But for now you can see that everything has been imported and positioned where I want it to go. At this point I can begin developing my uh, application just as I would in Flash. Now, as I said, this is going to be covered in a later tutorial. For now, we're going to go on and focus on our Flash Catalyst workflow. Now, Flash Catalyst is a brand new tool to Creative Suite 5. You need to have Creative Suite 5 in order to use Flash Catalyst. If you don't, you can download a free trial of Flash Catalyst by going to adobe.com forward slash flash catalyst. Although if you have purchased Creative Suite 5, you already have it. Now the 30 second elevator pitch of Flash Catalyst is that it's sort of a product that sits between the design tools like Photoshop and Illustrator and the development tools, Flash and Flash Builder. Most non-programmers kind of shy away from Flash because you have to write code in order to do some interactions. Flash Catalyst is kind of meant to change that around. You can import your design and you can add animations, button interactivity, play videos and audio, all without writing a single line of code. It's writing it for you, but you, can ha you have no ability to edit it or do any sort of programming inside of it. So uh, it's meant to be a rapid development tool for prototyping, for designing for, de for programmers, or for just creating simple interactive applications. Now you'll notice I can start from a Photoshop file. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click to import my restaurant.psd file, and I'm gonna click open. Flash Catalyst is gonna immediately give me some uh, importing features, much like Flash did. I'm gonna keep all my text uh, editable. I'm going to import any non-visual layers and I'm just going to hit OK. Flash Catalyst is going to analyze the Photoshop file. This may take a couple of minutes uh, if it's a large file, but in the end it will import all of the layers. Now notice if I take a look on the right hand side of Flash Catalyst there is a layers panel and you will see the exact same layer structure as we had in Photoshop. Really easy to bring assets in. Again, in a later part, we're going to focus on how to build out what we're building with Flash Catalyst, but for now, we're going to focus on our last product, InDesign. Our last product in the workflow example here is InDesign. Now, you may not be aware that InDesign can be used to create interactive documents. Some of this functionality was actually added with InDesign CS4. So what you're seeing today, some of it will be able to be done with CS4, but most of it is uh, CS5 specific. They added the ability to make animations, to make multi-state objects, to play videos, do all sorts of cool stuff uh, inside of a document. And the, the benefit of this is that it's leveraging your existing InDesign skills. Now, I'm going to warn you, if you have worked with Flash or Flash Catalyst, you're probably not going to like using InDesign to make interactive documents just because you don't have quite as many capabilities. It's a little different, the process. Uh, you know, I personally think it's a little awkward because I'm used to Flash, so I'm used to a very different paradigm. Um, but for those of you who have no Flash knowledge but are very good with InDesign, you're going to like some of this interactive elements that you can add because you don't have to really learn anything new from a product standpoint. You just have to learn some of the new features inside of InDesign. Now the workflow isn't quite as seamless. Um, I would love to get feedback on this. I've, I've done a lot of research and I can't seem to find a quick workflow from Photoshop. Um, but if anyone out there has better suggestions, I would love to hear about them. 
I'm going to start by making a new InDesign document. So I'm going to say File, New Document. Now, the intent, I'm going to choose Web, and this is important because I want to get um, the color mode set, the RG, to RGB color mode, um, and I want to be working in pixels. Now, I'm going to have to size my document. I'm going to have this be the size of my Photoshop canvas, which is 955 by 537. I'm going to get rid of all the margin information because I don't really care about margins in this case. Um, then I'm going to click OK. This is going to make me my InDesign document. Now I can place a Photoshop file in InDesign, however I have zero ability to manipulate the individual layers. I can toggle visibility between the layers, but I can't manipulate it. I can't move individual objects around. So for this example, I have created and exported all the images from Photoshop. So you'll see all the individual pieces broken down into uh, individual ping or JPEG files. I'm using ping files in situations where I need transparency. The only JPEG is really the background. So in InDesign, I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to choose place. I'm going to find the images and I'm just going to start with the JPEG. Let's select that and I'm getting some advanced options here that I had checked when I imported it. I'm going to uncheck that next time, but I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to drop this JPEG in the upper left-hand corner. Now notice I have a layers panel showing. Layers are very, very helpful in InDesign, especially InDesign CS5. You'll notice I can they, they behave a lot like Illustrator layers, where you can uh, toggle the visibility of sub-layers. Now I have this first layer set. I'm going to double-click on it. I'm going to call it Background. Now I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this layer logo and I'm going to import the logo. Now at this point I'm only really importing one image at a time but I will be changing that shortly. I'm going to make sure the transparency information comes through and I'm going to put the logo again in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to make a third layer. I'm going to call this layer panels. And in this case, I'm going to actually place multiple objects. I'm going to choose my four panels. I'm holding the controller command key. I'm going to uncheck the short show import options because I don't need to see those every single time. This is going to give me the ability to put in four panels. If I use my arrow key, I can nudge between the panels uh, if you want to import a certain panel at a certain time. But for now, I'm just going to click four times and put my four panels on screen. I can then grab my uh, selection tool and I can move the panels around to where I want to put them. So I'm going to have the aqua panel go first. That one's going to go last. I'm just going to reorder these a little bit. I'm not going to worry about their positioning. Now at this point, I'm going to import the rest of my images and get everything positioned where I want it to go. I have imported all of my assets into my InDesign document. And I have them broken down on the different layers. Currently, I have all the content hidden, but we'll see how we begin making this interactive in the part with uh, that covers our InDesign document. All my content is imported across all three documents and I am ready to start creating interactive elements.